Many people, the night sky is this calm, serene place, perhaps romantic. Fortunately, it is not. Every second in the universe, there's a star dying, a supernova explosion. The universe is an extremely dynamic place. And these short-lived explosions, they could last for seconds, for minutes, for months, but they disappear on us. And catching these flashes of light, catching these cosmic fireworks, that's what ZTF can uniquely do. ZTF will be able to find explosions faster than we've ever seen before, younger than we've ever seen before, and rarer than anything we've ever seen before. The Zwicky Transient Facility um, was named after Fritz Zwicky, the astronomer, because uh, he was in fact the founder of this branch of astronomy. And what it does is it uh, searches the sky for things that move or things that change in brightness. Zwicky in particular began serving the sky in a very systematic fashion and the way he found supernovae was real hard work. You actually put a photographic plate in the telescope, expose, bring it down to the dark room, develop, and during daytime, compare. It's hard work. You just find by your eye. The universe is so dynamic that you could subtract two identical pieces of the sky separated by an hour or a night and see new flashes of light that weren't there in the image from an hour before or the, or the night before. And those new flashes of light in the subtracted images are what we are after. The history of the Zwicky Transient Facility begins really in 1936 at Palomar in some very curious way and some fantastic way we're coming back to Palomar but with bigger and better machines. We knew looking at the 48 inch telescope that there's actually a lot more space there to build a much bigger, much better, much more powerful camera. The problem was to fit a very large camera into quite a modest sized telescope so that it does not block the light that's traveling down from the sky towards the primary mirror. Sort of the equivalent of taking a computer and turning it into a cell phone or a laptop. You had to worry about every millimeter of extra space that you used up. When you're doing all of the assembly material in a clean room, a lot of work went into sequencing to put these very delicate sensors together in this very tight space. I was relieved that uh, we managed to get all of those expensive devices uh, installed without damaging any of the semiconductors. Now, what we have is a sensor that's a uh, hundred times more sensitive, thus taking exposures which are a hundred times shorter. We have a robot that changes the filter in a matter of what, about a minute. We have a telescope which slews into position under computer control and settles in position within about eight or nine seconds of command of with the shutter closing. In the past, we've done this kind of thing, but at least 10 times slower, which means that we could only find events which lasted for, say, four days. And now we're getting down to the time scale of things that only may last a few hours. The idea was not to go and find a supernovae now and then, but to set up a very large industrial machine that could discover dozens of supernovae in a night. And that makes it possible to start asking more subtle questions. And when you have such a large number, there are always a few gems out there, each of which then become very unique insight into how nature makes these explosions. The ZTF will still be the dynamic universe unlike anything has ever done before. With its immense survey speed, ZTF can look at moving objects in the solar system, cataclysmic eruptions of stars in our own Milky Way galaxy, explosions in faraway galaxies, perhaps even find electromagnetic counterparts to gravitational waves and neutrinos. We have enough resolution in our image to reach almost the limit that's imposed by blurring in the atmosphere. So we're getting all the information there is and you walk up to any one of these images and you see all of these galaxies all over the place in these images. It's absolutely mind-blowing. It gives you this visceral sensation of how vast is the universe and how complex. And the amazing thing is that this camera is actually only looking at the relatively nearby universe. <laughs>